marchers, I'm going to give us a B plus for effort on this uh, cold Palm Sunday morning. You think a little bit better? A for effort? Yeah, okay. Um, happy Palm Sunday. Uh, I, I love how we uh, stumble into this space and try to be joyous on Palm Sundays. Um, it, it, it brings joy to my heart. So thank you for participating in that um, parade from outside to inside. Um, I'm Pastor Stephanie Munsell. I welcome you to First Presbyterian Church of Easton. We have a few announcements to share on this Palm Sunday and Communion Sunday. Before we go through the announcements in your bulletin, I will just note that the beautiful flowers, the pictures on display in the rear of the sanctuary um, are from our service where we honored the life of Naomi Smith that happened yesterday. Um, so thank you, Ruth Ann and family, for leaving these beautiful tokens of your mother's life um, here with us to enjoy. So um, please take time to look at the wonderful pictures in the rear of the sanctuary and remember Naomi. And join us downstairs um, for coffee hour and refreshments. And we are going to do our best. If you would like, we have sheets. Um, and I understand some of you can fold palms into crosses. If you are like me, you may, I don't know if your palm will end up looking like a cross, but that is okay. Um, we do have some extra crosses um, that have already been folded, but come for the fellowship and for some time folding crosses. We are continuing in the season of Lent to mark our holy days. Um, this week we will have um, a Monday Thursday service um, on April 6th at 6.30. But before we have that service, it is likely that we will have another funeral service on Wednesday. I received news that Benny, Betty Minnick has passed away. Um, she was at Easton Home for many years, and then when they closed, she was uh, shifted out to Williamsport. Um, so we haven't been able to physically see her, but our deacons have been staying in touch, and um, we heard those sad news just this week. When we have more details about that service, I will be sure to share it with anybody who remembers Betty. As we move on into the month, uh, friends, we have a congregational meeting on April 16th. The session will offer an update um, on our plans to address our 2023 budget deficit. And we will also be moving to dissolve my call here with the church. Um, and then on the following week, I believe we'll, um, we'll be having progressive dinner but there'll be plenty of opportunities for, uh, for me to be able to say goodbye to you all and to thank you for my years here. Um, so please come on that Sunday and do the important work of the church. I did mention the progressive dinner on April 22nd. We also have some meetings coming up. Our property team meeting um, is on April 11th. Uh, session will meet after the Monday Thursday service on April 6th and then again on April 18th and the deacons will meet after worship on April 30th. Um, there will be no choir rehearsal on April 5th but there will be chancel choir. Oh I'm sorry so there will be chancel choir but there will not be handbell choir. Thank you. Um, in the season of Lent, we are collecting um, money for the one great hour of sharing. Again, this is the special offering of the Presbyterian Church that addresses hunger, disaster, and self-development of people. We've heard the news about disasters um, in a couple of locations. So this is the arm of our denomination that reaches out to people who have been touched by disaster, um, flooding, tornadoes, uh, some of the terrible things we've been seeing in the news. So please contribute to that offering as you are able. Those are the announcements that I would like to highlight today. 
is there anything that I have neglected? Yes, Shirley. Easter Sunday morning, uh, Shirley has directions, so, um, and she is luring you in those early hours. It's not enough to celebrate Easter, but there is breakfast. Thanks be to God. No, indeed, it's a wonderful way to mark uh, a very special day. Please join us for coffee hour after the service. I want to add one more word of thanksgiving. Um, we had a beautiful service here yesterday, an ice cream social where I enjoyed blackberry ice cream. Is that what it was? Black raspberry. Black raspberry. Um, but then late into the evening, um, there was smoke in the building and the fire department had to come out. And uh, Rich Linnell, if you see him later on, he's in his working gear because he was here late, um, making sure that we had heat this morning. So my thanks to Rich. Um, if you want to be on the call list when an alarm goes off at 20, at 24 sevens, Rich is taking people to sign up for that. So he would be happy to um, invite you to share that with him. So thank you, Rich. <laughs> Friends, with all of this and Hosanna on this Palm Sunday morning, I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Open the gates, give us courage to walk through. Lay down the cloaks. We mark the journey to love's reign. Lift up the branches. Let us boldly proclaim God's peace. join your voices with mine in this morning's prayer of confession. O oh God, we stand at the gate, hesitant and uncertain. 
We are reluctant to answer your invitation. We are slow to embark on the journey towards your reign. Forgive us, we pray. Grant us the help we need to be your people, the courage to join you in the procession, the selflessness to lay our cloaks before you, the freedom to lift our palms to your glory, and the knowledge that by your grace we are forgiven. Amen. Hear this good news. The procession is ever moving forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Two readings today, one from David, our psalmist. It's Psalm 118, 1 and 2, 19 to 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Pen to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The storm, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us. We beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal possessions with branches that up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his stead steadfast love endures forever. And then from Matthew 21, 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately go, you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken of through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and the others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of me, him, sorry, and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, 
the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds are saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Will you join your hearts with mine? O Holy One, your word is a lamp unto our feet, a guide along our path. Illuminate now your word to us, that we may seek your wisdom and know your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Who doesn't love a parade? How many of you grew up watching the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving? Anybody? I didn't, but my husband did. How many of you have attended homecoming parades, which are big events for colleges and high schools? Homecoming parades? How about Memorial Day parades that create a, way, a great public way to thank our veterans? Anybody ever go to one of those? Do you know that the first significant procession to be documented in the United States was one that took place in Philadelphia um, when the Constitution was ratified on June 21st, 1788. The people of the city spilled into the streets and they paraded through the city to a common area where there, together, they celebrated. Who doesn't love a parade? But did you also know, in Avon, Ohio, there's a duct tape parade. Because duct tape was created there, founded there. Now in Los Angeles, um, every year they hold a lobster festival at the port. That's not so unusual. Um, but they have decided, along with that every year, to hold a lobster dog parade. I'll say that again, a lobster dog parade. What they do is um, it's become a, a beloved tradition. Dog owners put their pets into costumes of lobster and other seafood, and they parade through the festival. Who doesn't love a parade? Now, our parades today are fun and whimsical. They're community activities. And so it makes sense that Palm Sunday is such a joyous Sunday because that's what we associate with the procession, a parade. And on one hand, I think the lighter side of Palm Sunday is wonderful. Now, we don't do it so much today, or not maybe to the extent that we should, but the Lenten season tends to be somber. It's supposed to be a serious time of penitence, and reflection. Why? So that as we approach Easter, we are grounded in the knowledge of our own sin, of the darkness of the world, and our need for forgiveness, for being saved, for a savior. To meditate on human sin helps the faithful to prepare for Easter. So Palm Sunday, with its joy, is a little nod in this season of Lent that Easter is coming. Joyful. Who doesn't love a parade? But parades can have a less frivolous and fanciful side. Long ago, many early rulers would have their armies line up and march in formation. This was a well-known parade. But this public display was one of power, of intimidation, both for neighboring armies and also for the people of that ruler. Look and see my power. Keep this in mind as we consider the scene long ago as we hear the scripture about Jesus' parade into Jerusalem. The scene opens during Passover. 
People from all over were gathering in the city of Jerusalem. Because Passover was such an important holiday, celebrating the exodus of the Hebrew people from slavery, at that time, almost 200,000 people gathered in that ancient city. It was quite a crowd. And the crowd were the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, that outnumbered at that time the Roman presence in that city. Because it was a time of remembering Jewish liberation, it also became a time for occasional riots and revolts against the occupation of the Roman Empire. And so it was that Roman practice was to increase their presence of imperial troops in the city, around the temple, all through those holy days. Rome employed lots of pomp and circumstance. What were they trying to remind the Jewish people of that city? Perhaps that Rome was the one who was ultimately in charge. In fact, Rome's governor, Pontius Pilate, would ride into the city through the gates in the west, the head of an impressive procession on the, of the imperial cavalry and foot soldiers. The people could commemorate the ancient victory against Egypt if they wanted to, but they would be reminded of Roman power. We have to know about that display on the Western Gate if we are to consider what Jesus was doing on the Eastern Gate. About the same time that Rome held its big procession on one side of the city, on the Eastern side were Jesus and the disciples with a very different parade. What does he ride on, friends? A donkey. Do you consider the donkey a threatening military presence? Of course not. He rides with a young donkey and leads a foal. The most unthreatening, most unmilitary mount imaginable. And it's an important detail to understand the procession that Jesus is leading. Make no mistake, the parade that Jesus was leading was a protest march against Rome. It was a mockery of the triumphant display of the earthly power being presented on the other side of Rome. Jesus was presenting himself as a different kind of king, ushering in a different reign. And who was the power that Jesus' parade celebrated? The power of sacrifice, the power of God. Jesus rides to proclaim that there is nothing laughable about seeking peace in a violent world. Jesus is king of the fools, the foolish people who seek to have hope no matter what. Those foolish people who believe that life can triumph over death. Jesus' parade is the parade of the marginalized and the forgotten, the lonely and the lowly. No wonder so many people join in with Jesus' parade. Jesus doesn't bring in the pomp and circumstance. He comes in on his donkey, and the crowds recognize what he represents. In Jesus' parade, everyone is welcome. On the other side of town is the parade of the powerful. Jesus' parade is for the meek. Jesus' parade does not spread fear or seek compliance. Jesus' parade spreads the message, the gospel message, 
that God's kingdom, God's kingdom is near. That the values of the good and righteous Lord of life will be triumphant. It is an ironic and a somewhat ridiculous parade. Because this way of humility and sacrifice that Jesus represents are at, odd with human, are at odds with human pride. Who doesn't love a parade? Friends, in this week, if you've been watching the news as I have, you've been aware of additional death by gun violence, of unpredictable weather patterns and disasters, of ongoing political battles, book banning, the vilifying of our gay and trans brothers and sisters in Christ. How can we be part of a parade when there is war in this world, where there is violence and hurt? But friends, maybe now is the best time to be, pick up our palms and to be part of Jesus' parade, to shout with joy in the face of hardship. Maybe now we need to bravely, bravely march with Jesus because being joyful in the face of hostility and division is a radical statement of hope. Maybe shouting for Jesus on his donkey, riding to face down his own death, is a radical act of solidarity against the powers and principalities in this world that seek to snuff out God's light. Now is the best time for us to be part of the parade. So let us ride on, friends. Let us follow where Jesus leads. The road ahead is not easy, but it is a real and truthful path. And on this road, we will meet our Savior. Will you join this parade? Thanks be to God, for Jesus rides on for each one of us. Amen.
Friends, God has given us so many gifts in Christ and in creation. We offer our gifts in return, in gratitude for the possibilities we enjoy, trusting God to multiply what we bring for goodness' sake. Please leave your offering in the box in the front of the sanctuary or make your gifts online or through the mail. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we offer our gifts in thanksgiving for all the goodness you provide. Bless our gifts and our lives so that we may become a source of goodness for others. In the name of Christ, our strength and our hope. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture tells us they will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast. Will you join me in our great prayer of thanksgiving? The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord. Our God, creator and ruler of the universe, in your wisdom you made all things. You sustain them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. And yet when we've rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way then, in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent us your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us, to heal our brokenness. O oh, great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Therefore, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, joining our voices with the choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Donna in the highest. O God, your Son, Jesus, fulfills the prophet's words and entered the city of Jerusalem, where he was lifted high upon the cross, that the whole world might be drawn to him. By his suffering and death, he defeated the power of death, becoming the source of eternal life. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, life has been restored. We give you thanks, O Lord, that Jesus, on the night before he died, he took bread. And after giving thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given to you. 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you, O God, to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we drink and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in mystery and ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Friends, take, eat. These gifts of God are the gifts for the people of God. Alleluia. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our help and strength, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. Strengthen our faith that through death and resurrection of your Son, we may be led to salvation. For he is Lord now and forever. Amen. Go now to follow Christ where Christ leads you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be at peace now and forevermore. Amen.